Hello and welcome to Study IQ. I am Prashant Pawani. I hope you are doing good, my dear friends. Uh, the special topic that I have for you guys today is called How Bapu United India. This is uh, basically the points that we are going to talk about in this uh, special topic is uh, coming from an article written by our Prime Minister Narendra Modi. But before that, I would like to inform all of you that today is the last day for up to 50% discount. Make the most out of it. And you can download the PDF of today's lecture from my FB page and Twitter handle. Now, Prime Minister talked about uh, cleanliness. You know how it all started uh, four years ago and we have got uh, one year to go before we celebrate 150th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi ji and it is our responsibility right we all are stakeholders when it comes to cleaning our country and making sure that our country is beautiful country uh, and for that you know means every one of us is directly indirectly affected uh, you know if we if we are living in a clean environment then it is going to impact our health in that way it is going to bring more tourists in our country more economic opportunities for all of us and things like that we can create so many things from waste isn't it from waste to wealth and things like that all all these topics we have talked about it so i'm sure regular students i don't have to repeat this thing i'm i'm i'm, I'm, I'm damn sure that you know exactly uh, what the potential is of this swachh bharat abhiyan apart from that uh, prime minister talks in or he writes in this article that mahatma gandhi ji is a shining beacon of hope for millions of people across the world and he has always been a shining beacon take martin luther king junior or talk about nelson mandela uh, look at this whole freedom struggle of uh, of some european countries and even today we find that uh, you know united nations and so many other countries you go to africa many uh, countries they have mahatma gandhi ji's statue uh, outside the british parliament as well you find mahatma gandhi ji's statue so this man has you know inspired so many people around the world and this is the reason why he is respected around the world uh, even today you know and he will always be relevant and i'm sure if you find a question in your mains examination or in your descriptive examination asking you to explain uh, how or why mahatma gandhi ji is relevant or his ideals are relevant even today then i'm sure in from today's discussion you will you know you'll find so many important points that will directly help you you can just stick some of the items from today's discussion and i'm sure it will fetch you good marks because uh, we are going to analyze it and on the other side uh, this items are written by prime minister narendra modi so of course you can say that government of india is uh, you know talking uh, with us directly or communicating with us about the importance of mahatma gandhi ji now uh, sardar vallabhbhai patel in his words uh, he said that india is a land of diversity if there was one person who brought everyone together made people rise above differences to fight colonialism and enhanced india's stature at the world stage it was mahatma gandhi ji no doubt in today's world you know we find terrorism and radicalization and extremism and mindless hate and all these things do we have any weapon to fight against this thing it's not your ak47 or your missiles we are talking about this ideology and you can hit or eliminate this extremist ideology with only a positive thing and that is peace and ahimsa right it may sound a bit uh, uh, utopian but the reality is that if if people in a society if they are peace loving people if they are non violent people then political leaders as well as our police personnel our army personnel all of us you know will have this bent of mind our tilt will be towards peace and of course if you are say for example let me throw some light on violence and non violence if our soldiers are protecting our country right if some intruder with a gun or bomb if he or she is trying to enter our country and if he or she is trying to kill some people in our country and if you are hitting that person if you are killing that person then that's not violence that is called self defense violence is what they are doing to us what uh, british raj was doing on us or when you hit a small kid who is uh, weaker who is smaller in size who is weaker than you if you are uh, you know physically mentally emotionally economically uh, if you are uh, doing something bad with someone particularly who is weaker than you and generally speaking what we find in uh, in today's world is people will you know will be uh, bullying someone who is weaker than them you will never find someone bullying a person who is stronger than that you know that person so this is a, you can say cowardice uh, violence itself 
you know the root of violence is in is in fear uh, is in cowardice you know only only a person who is weak will harm someone who is uh, weaker than that person so that's uh, that's the main root cause of violence or you can say the mother of violence is is fear uh, fear or you can say cowardice is 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 the mother of violence that's what i understand because i have never seen a strong person a strong person will never you know prove or will create fear in you in fact a strong person will create strength in you that's that's a signature of a of a strong person we meet so many people in our everyday life uh, uh, when we when we interact with most of the people around us we find that uh, most of the people are engaged in or they are in this you know try to prove how good they are right uh, but uh, very few people out there are there when you meet them they will make you realize that how good you are you know rather than self praising they would be they would be you know touching all those things in your life that will make you realize that you are unique you are good and this was one of the most unique quality of mahatma gandhi ji uh, he has worked for climate change 100 years ago you can say because he was talking about 100, 1909 back in 1909 he talked about uh, human wants and human greed you know uh, about needs and wants if you are from management background or commerce background then you know we used to be uh, we used to uh, or, or in this programs uh, they teach you a very basic definition of uh, or difference between wants and needs uh, right needs are all those items like cloth food health education all these things are our needs but wants are unlimited uh, we want this thing now then we want that thing and this will never end this is never going to end as well so we need to rein our greed and wants and we have to just to stick with our needs and needs are more than enough if you need a car that's fine right if you need a car it's fine but then after having one car you are thinking for another one and then you want a bigger one and more fast and so this is never going to end if it it's your necessity that's fine if you are uh, having a mobile phone it's fine right get the best one if you if you can afford it but once you get it then make sure you are using it you are not just chasing after every couple of months you are changing it this is uh, i would say it is a sort of misuse of uh, resources that we have and it is going to create more and more strains because every time you are asking for a new product uh, a tree is chopped off somewhere a, a, a sort of uh, mine is you know mind uh, you have to you know do so many things uh, for to create a product so we have to be very much conscious in today's world particularly in this era of climate change and environment degradation so my uh, gandhi ji used to you know uh, talk about all these things uh, 100 years ago so you can imagine how innovative innovative he would be isn't it uh, he he has uh, touched the sanitation at that point of time when uh, casteism and all these things were quite prevalent uh, you know he used to clean his own toilet and now you would be thinking that why he was cleaning his own toilet because he was a person who was uh, who was thinking about someone else as well um i have heard this thing that uh, in japan if you are, if you use a public toilet then you have to make sure that uh, you hit that uh, liquid toilet cleaner and you brush it before you leave and uh, this indicates you know that uh, the person this is a sign of uh, a selfless you can say or a very caring society or a caring individual that you think about someone else that after you someone else is going to use it and you cannot leave it in a bad state so this was his you know this was his uh, vision uh, this much uh, sensitive he was so he's definitely inspiring isn't it in in this way i ho- i hope all these things are making sense here it's not like a bhashan or something coming from my side only i want you guys to think about it you know i'm talking i'm analyzing his his personality as well along with the points that we find on our screen he used to talk about and not only talk about he used to take great care to ensure that this unclean water of sabarmati ashram is not entering uh, into this uh, sabarmati river and today we find this reports that out of 320 rivers in our country some 304 rivers are polluted and all these things just imagine if we would have learned at least 5% 10% from mahatma gandhi ji then uh, things would have been different isn't it uh, when it comes to uh, river conservation or our protecting our rivers uh, back in 1941 mahatma gandhi ji wrote constructive program and it was revised 
by him in 1945 and in this constructive program he talked about uh, strengthening agriculture rural development enhancing sanitation program promoting khadi empowerment of women in e economic inequality and observe the programs that are run by today's uh, state as well as central government you'll find everything right all these points that were discussed by mahatma gandhi ji some 70 80 years ago are still relevant today are still important today he also as i told you you know he used to make every indian feel that every indian is unique and he or she is contributing even if uh, he or she is a doctor lawyer teacher farmer laborer entrepreneur everyone is contributing uh, you know directly indirectly in nation building uh, everyone is you know contributing in freedom struggle so this is this is a very unique thing of mahatma gandhi ji that he used to you know he used to light or spark this uh, spark this spirit within each and every one of us or our forefathers and and this is the reason uh, why where we are at present we are here there are so many people out there you know they will keep they will complain uh, they will say this and that about gandhi ji but i would say one thing that if you know that mahatma gandhi ji has done this thing if if you think that this is wrong and if that thing is wrong then why you are complaining why you are not doing something about it right at least are you doing something that will add more value to this world if not then you should you know sit down and think about uh, that rather than complaining it is better to act it is far more better to act and if we cannot act then at least we should uh, you know stop uh, grudging about uh, someone else isn't it uh, that's uh, that's a very basic thing about our manners and he talked about zero food and uh, zero waste of food you know have uh, economical he used to be when it comes to using water and all this thing so uh, these are the things uh, that are relevant today if we stop wasting food you know if you just go visit this weddings right the big fat indian weddings we find huge amount of so many varieties are you know nowadays it's a fashion or it's a societal trend that if you if you are not uh, serving this many items then you are not doing or if you you are not looking after your guests very well but hardly anyone is talking about this thing that so much of food is wasted you know and there are so many people out there they sleep hungry so uh, can you see a sort of selfish uh, society here i think i can and i'm i'm sure we all can uh, that uh, we need to think about there are so many things that we can learn he was he was uh, promoting cycling as well uh, there was a time when he was living in uh, uh, south africa when he came back in india at that point of time as well he used to cycle in his st uh, starting days so bicycle was his uh, his you can say he was he used to walk as well as we all know but he used to bicycle as well and it's a very green you can say method of uh, commentation and are we you know can we emulate this same spirit uh, that we will take a walk or we'll take a bicycle can we do these things uh, right uh, so um, again so many questions and i'm sure many of us uh, will not uh, you know match up this standard of uh, mahatma gandhi ji when it comes to environment when it comes to thinking when it comes to uh, self uh, self Uh, selfless uh, you know care about society and things like that so festive and seasons are just around the corner and we can you know buy things that are made from khadi and things that are made by people of our country particularly poor people and we can gift all these things and if we do this thing that we are going to light you know uh, or we are going to provide economic opportunities to so many poor people of our country so all these things are there for us to think and uh, mahatma gandhi ji used to believe in this a good soul is one who feels the pain of others you might have heard about this or uh, this haim called uh, vaishnav jan to tene kahiye je peer parai jaane re so it's a gujarati uh, line and uh, the meaning is that uh, a good soul is one who feels the pain of others and this was the spirit and i believe i strongly believe that all of you have this spirit and the reason i'm saying is is because uh, in today's world you know you if if you calculate then you will find a good job you all are well educated some of you have completed your masters and you've done you know passed out from famous universities and colleges you will find a very good job private jobs but then as well uh, uh, most of you are you know uh, aspiring to to become civil servants and you know joining government offices and somewhere down the line apart from career building career there is no harm in it if you if you can stand on your own feet then only you would be able to help someone so it's not negative thing but 
I'm, I'm sure that all of you have this spirit, you know, to serve our country. And this is this is a unique thing. And uh, this is what Gandhi ji and other freedom fighters were, you know, trying to achieve. Uh, that uh, youngsters one day will have this spirit, and we have it. So. At least we can say that uh, in terms of uh, this seed, yes, we have it. Now we have to make sure that we start delivering fruits as well in terms of nation building. A very important statement coming from Vice President. Uh, Vice President said that uh, peace is the foremost prerequisite, right? It's most important thing. If you just take a family, if a family is not peaceful, then you won't find progress in that family. So for nation building as well, it is very important that we have a terror-free, violence-free, poverty-free, discrimination-free environment. And uh, he also talked about this thing that we need to, you know, we need this combination of science and spirituality, which we used to find in Gurukul education. We can have it today. And if we have this thing, then we will be generating a new human being. You know, a new, uh, you can say, a new human being, a new uh, human capital will be generated for our country if we, if we marry this science and spirituality with each other in our education isa international solar alliance very important topic here few facts uh, for you guys uh, so far 68 countries have joined this one and it's an international intergovernmental organization to promote solar energy of course 121 countries are part of it uh, isa targets uh, to produce uh, 1000 gigawatt solar uh, energy by 2030 india has committed 175 gigawatt by 2022 and the first you know assembly of this international solar alliance was inaugurated by our Pr prime minister narendra modi uh, secretary general of united nation was present here antonio Guterres, and uh, prime minister said that from last uh, you know in the past 150 200 years uh, mankind has depended on fossil fuels for energy but now this is the time that we need to move on to switch over to this solar wind and water uh, or you can say renewable source of energy he also said this thing and this is very right that after maybe 50 60 or maybe 100 100 and 200 years after uh, today's era you know uh, in future when human beings will be talking about today's 21st century and most important uh, you can say milestone that uh, that uh, has worked for the welfare of mankind then of course the uh, international solar alliance will be at the top of the list he talked about climate justice uh, he also said this important statement that a time will come when this opec will be replaced by isa as a key global energy supplier uh, he talked about uh, paris agreement he said that how uh, this whole thing was started uh, or announced in Paris Agreement time. At that point of time, Franco Hollande was the president of uh, France and together Prime Minister of India and President of France declared this uh, ISA. And, uh, uh, you know, 40% of India's total energy requirements uh, by 2030 will be coming from renewable energy. He talked about uh, three Bs, biomass, biofuel and bioenergy. And he also talked about uh, this uh, storage of energy. He said that power generation is, of course, important, but power storage is also important. And for that, India is working on this national energy storage mission. Uh, Prime Minister was awarded uh, Champions of Earth Award. This is the highest uh, environmental honor uh, uh, from United Nations. And uh, this is a big thing for our country, of course. He talked about four Ps, that if we want to save and protect and uh, develop our environment you know make it bit more healthy bit bit more beautiful than we need for peace we need political leadership we need uh, public funding people's part uh, participation and partnership uh, between various different countries uh, home minister had a meeting with farmers leaders and uh, you know farmers are not happy with uh, certain things like uh, ngt's uh, order of uh, banning 10 year old diesel vehicles and uh, this is a thing on which farmers are not happy. They are not happy with uh, uh, some, you know, remuneration or this, uh, not remuneration, but compensation that they get under this Prasdhan Mantri Fasal Bima Yojana and things like that. So, Home Minister had a meeting with these farmers' uh, leaders and uh, we have uh, talked about, uh, we means Home Minister or Government of India has said that uh, it is going to review this NGT order as well as all those items that are used by farmers for agriculture production will be uh, you know reduced or kept under the slab of five percent under gst for that a proposal has been forwarded to gst council he talked about minimum support price and uh, he has also talked about this uh, committee that is headed by minister of state for agriculture 
गजेंद्र सिंह शेखावत इज गोइंग टू लुक आफ्टर प्रधानमंत्री फसल बीमा योजना इश्यूज एंड अदर इश्यूज लाइक फार्म लोन वेवर एंड कट इन फ्यूअल प्राइसेस एंड अदर डिमांड्स दैट आर बीन यू नो रेज बाय फार्मर्स नोबल प्राइस इन फिजिक्स हैज बीन गिवन टू आर्थर आस्किंग जेराड मोरो एंड डोना डोना स्ट्रिकलैंड Uh, for their laser f- uh, for their work in this laser physics uh, which helps in precision instruments used in industry and medicine that's everything in today's discussion thank you very much for listening god bless you all jai hind